All aboard to Pixley. Direct connection to O'Donnell Supermarket. All aboard. Get that darn train out of here and take that sign down. <laughs> hey, let go of that. That's railroad property. Now, look at what you done. You want to buy some mending tape? We'll buy it over at O'Donnell's. He ain't a main old sign grabber. Oh, everybody's going over to O'Donnell's. I ain't seen a customer since they opened. Better get aboard, everybody. Oh, Mrs. Brown, I got a special on bacon today. 45 cents a pound. Miss Higley, I got a big special on bacon. 35 cents a pound. Could I interest you in a pound of bacon? 15 cents. 10 cents? 5 cents? Free bacon. Free bacon. I'll take a couple of pounds of free bacon. Get out of here, you backstabber. Go on up to O'Donnell's. I don't need your business. You're all a bunch of no good. <laughs> Goodbye, choo choo. <laughs> you were Mr. Drucker's friends. We are. We sure are. I just got through telling her we are. <laughs> then why are you hauling his customers up to Pixley so they can shop in that new market? Well, Betty Joe, we don't have any choice. If the people want to go to Pixley on the train, we got to take them, even if we don't like the reason they're going. Yeah, as the saying goes, ours is not the reason why. Ours is but to drink your ride. Oh, <laughs> that's not the way the saying goes. I think it's terrible. I got another one about an early bird. <laughs> I mean about Mr. Drucker's customers deserting him, shopping a new store just because it's got a lot of fancy new gadgets and gimmicks. Well, Betty Joe, it's only natural. Folks all like the new gadgets and the gimcracks, including us. Well, I don't, and Mom doesn't. Nobody in our family's gonna shop in that old supermarket. <laughs> It'll be fourteen dollars and twenty-two cents. Out of fifteen. Here's your change. Thank you. And thank you very much. <laughs> Is there something wrong? That it's pretty crowded down there where that fellow's making change. <laughs> Now, the cash register does that automatically. Well, it beats Sam Drucker's old-fashioned method of shortchanging the customer. <laughs> you know Sam Drucker? No, not personally, but a lot of his customers have been doing their shopping here recently. Well, it don't surprise me, none. If he listened to my progress defying ideas, I could have made him the same unbelievable success I made of the Shady Rest. Shady Rest? Don't tell me you ain't never heard of it. No, I haven't been here very long, just since I opened the store. Well, the Shady Rest, one of the last of the great ulcer modern resort type hotel, which caters to a luxury loving clientele. I'm Joe Carson, the manager, chief purchasing agent. Well, I'm certainly glad to know you, Mr. Carson. Yeah, for years we've been throwing all of our business to Sam to try to keep him from going busted. But he just ain't got the equipment to handle the daily big orders of an operation like the Shady Rest. <laughs> Sam's interested in the small change, not the big picture. <laughs> How much you get for these? All those are five cents apiece. You know how much business I throw Sam Drucker every year? Oh, I have no idea. Yet would you believe when I go in his store and pick up one of these for the purpose of testing its quality for the Waldorf-type cooking we have to offer, he charges me for it. Mm, that's very short-sighted. Yeah, it's little things like that that make me think of relocating the hotel's source of supply. You don't happen to know any reliable outfit around here that can handle our volume of business, do you? Oh, well, I'm sure that our store could handle it for you. Well, I never thought of that. <laughs> of course, it ain't quite as big as I'd like. Oh, well, I'm sure we can take care of all your needs, Mr. Carson. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, maybe we'll give you a try. Oh, well, yes, sir. I'll, uh, I'll be glad to take care of your order personally. Mr. O'Donnell? Uh, just one moment, please. Please, Mrs. I'm, I'm in a big... Uh, Mrs. Williams, please, just a moment. All right, sir, uh, Go ahead. OK, 
can of coffee. One can of coffee. Uh, what else? That's all. <laughs> That's all. And don't forget my stamp. <laughs> Mr. Carson, I'm sure that handling a big order like this would make me very nervous. I would prefer it if you went back and got your coffee yourself. But uh, and, uh, it's, it's very easy to find. It's right in aisle C. It's right down there at the back of the store. Now you go down aisle B, past the fruit salad, the succotash, the dog food. You turn right at the hot water bottles. Then you turn left at the movie magazines. Go right down aisle C, past the beach balls, and the coffee is right there on the bottom shelf. You ain't creating no good will. Well, I am not trying to. Oh, uh, this banana, that goes on your bell, too. Now, oh, Mrs. Williams, I'm awfully sorry. Where's Mrs. Williams? You send Uncle Joe to Drucker's for coffee. We've got about ten cans here. Hey, look at all the canned goods you bought from him. I guess I have been overbuying, trying to keep up Sam's morale. Hi. Hi, Uncle Joe. I, I told you just to buy a can of coffee. Oh, I found a lot of other things I thought we might need. Oh, glad you did. A fruit salad? Succotash? <laughs> Dog food? <laughs> Uh, send in three labels with 50 cents and you get a rhinestone dog collar. You know, there's been some change missing from my dresser. Hey, what'd you buy a hot water bottle for, Uncle Joe? Oh, I had a slow leak in my old one. What is that? A beach ball. Why, did you have a slow leak in your old one? <laughs> I don't remember Sam carrying beach balls. I didn't think he carried water bottles either. That's why he's losing all his trade to O'Donnell's. You mean you went over to Pixley to do your shopping? Well, kind of. Well, $6.20 doesn't sound like kind of. Well, I couldn't just walk around there eating bananas without buying something. Yeah, but you didn't buy the coffee. When we bought all that coffee from Sam, I figured we didn't need any more. But we need a beach ball. <laughs> Why did you go over there shopping in the first place? To do a little research to help Sam's backward merchandising. Kate, he ain't gonna get back any of them unsatisfied customers until he makes a few changes. Like what? Like putting in electric eyeballs. <laughs> electric eyeballs? Yeah. Well, Donald put them on his front door, and when you make contact with them, they open the door for you. <laughs> Sam always opens the door for me himself. Just because he's too chintzy to get a set of electric eyeballs. <laughs> he ain't got one of them automatic change given cash registers either. No, he hasn't. Then what's the point of shopping with him? He gives us credit. Hey, just because Sam lets you run up a bill for two or three years, is that any reason why you should trade there? Can you think of a better one? <laughs> Uncle Joe, I want you to take all this stuff back. Kate, okay, a big supermarket like O'Donnell's, ain't got Sam's backward policies of letting you return stuff years after you bought it. I think it's a very nice policy. What do women know about shopping? I know this much. I've been shopping with Sam for years, and I like doing business with him. Kate, you ain't helping him with that kind of an attitude. If he'd listened to a couple of his real friends like me, I'd have showed him how to turn a country store into a chain of automatic door-opening supermarkets. Uncle Joe, hasn't Mr. Drucker got enough trouble? Don't worry about Sam. He's had rough competition before, and he's never panicked. Oh, Donald will crack before he will. No, I ain't got any. No, I ain't going to order any. Because I don't feel like ordering them, that's why. If you want them, buy them up in Pixley and O'Donnell's. <laughs> what customers calling up asking for things you haven't got? Morning, Sam. Oh, morning. Uh, uh. Kate. <laughs> Sam, are you feeling all right? Of course I'm feeling all right. What do you want? I, I just want a small order. Small order. That's all I ever get is small orders. If I ever got a big order, I'd think I was in the wrong store. Well, we could come back later. The service ain't going to be any better then. Oh, well, I, um, I like a small can of those little peas and... Small can of little peas, small can of little peas, huh? Little peas. I had one here yesterday. Maybe you sold it. To who? I have no idea. 
Then quit mixing in my business. Oh, Sam, I wasn't mixing in your... Hey, kid, will you put that down? I was just feeling it, Mr. Drucker. No feeling unless you're buying. Sam. Betty Jo meant no harm. Hi, Betty Jo. <laughs> oh, now, what can I do for you? Uh, uh... Kate, I'd like a small can of... Uh... Peas? Yeah. Everybody wants to buy a can of peas. Someday I don't sell it. Will you get away from there? <laughs> dog sniffing, dog biscuits and kids feeling material. What can I do for you, Kate? <laughs> Nothing, Sam. Thanks. Well, that's good, because I'm awful busy. I'm trying to find a can of peas for a crabby customer. <laughs> I don't think it's anything physical, Doc. It's just that Sam's been acting kind of nervous lately. Nervous? Snappy and edgy. Well, he doesn't have any medical history of snappy and edgy. He snapped at Betty Joe today. And you know he's never had a harsh word for the girls. If anything, he spoiled them. That's right. And he's had trouble remembering my name. You know, Doc, this is none of my business, but Sam doesn't have anybody to look out for him, and I, well, I just kind of wish you'd look him over. Well, I'd be glad to, Kate. Tell him to drop in any time. Now, I'm not going over there. Well, it's all right. Either he comes over here or you go over there. Now you make up your mind. He charges $2 for an office visit and $3 for a store call. But there's nothing wrong with me. Oh. Uh, excuse me. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Darn phone rings all day and there's never anybody there. <laughs> Maybe I could get Dr. Cutty's price to $2 for a store call. Now hold still, Sam. Hold still. Open your mouth and say, ah. Go on, Sam. Give me a big ah. Oh! Sam. Oh. Oh, come There's over nothing here. wrong with me. Lie down. Sam, Sam I hear you. you just here. got to. Easy That's now. the only way the doc can now. examine you. Now, you just be quiet, and we'll just get this right here. Oh. And you've got to cooperate. I am cooperating with him. I, I took the stick out of the ice cream bar for him, didn't I? Have you got any temperature? Well, how would I... don't talk. <laughs> here we are. What do you usually carry, about 29 pounds in this old arm? Oh, Doc. Oh, he was just teasing you. Well, I can do without teasing at $2 a call. $3. Two. Oh, 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 your pressure just went up 10 points. I don't think he has any temperature. Let him tell me. You haven't got any temperature. Well, look at the thermometer. What's the use? It's broken. What? What do you expect for $2? I'll answer it. Answer what? <laughs> Hello? Well, he's um, real busy right now. Yeah, I'll have him call you back. There we are. Hello, oh, Sam. How have you been sleeping at night? Well, how can I sleep worrying about losing all those customers to the market in Pixley? It ain't hard enough Sam, trying to earn a living. Sa Sam, when was the last time you had a vacation? Yeah, I can tell you. 1950. How do you know? Because I treated you for poison ivy and sunburn. It's high time you had another vacation. I can't afford one. I got all these big medical bills. <laughs> You're gonna have bigger ones if you don't take a vacation. Now, Sam, you like Lever Lake. Why don't you go up there and just fish, relax, and sleep? Do you a lot more good than any 85 cent prescription I could give you. Sounds nice, but who'd look after the store? Close it up. And lose all that business? You haven't got any business. Answer the phone. <laughs> I'll take care of the store for you, Sam. Two weeks vacation would be the best medicine in the world for you. One. Two weeks. Ten days. Two weeks, and when can you go? In about three months. Now, you listen to me, Sam Drucker. You're packing your bag this afternoon and getting on that train and going to Glover's Lake for two whole weeks. Oh, Doc. Two dollars. Three. <laughs> well, hey, I... Yes, I do need a vacation. I thought we'd never get him off. He was a nervous wreck. Well, he sure is. Good morning, Mrs. Bradley. 
And how are your two little girls? Like some jelly beans? Help yourself. Just a second. You run in the store? Yes, ma'am. Then run in the back, get a broom, and start sweeping. <laughs> Is this for selling or for dusting? We'll use it for dusting, and if somebody wants to buy it, we'll sell it. Huh? What's this? Ah, uh, that's a button hook. Well, what's it for? Hooking buttons. On dresses? On shoes. When did they ever have buttons on shoes? They used to wear them in the 1890s. Oh, did you wear them? I said they wore them in the 1890s. <laughs> well, that would only make you about... <laughs> I'll put it back. Do <laughs> Renway's raccoon coat renewer? <laughs> raccoon coats? Mm-hmm. College boys used to wear them. For what? To keep them warm while riding in a rumble seat. Oh, what's a rumble seat? <laughs> are we gonna clean up or are we gonna study history? There's no point in cleaning this place up. What we ought to do is get rid of all this junk, take out all that ancient fixtures, put in one of those change given cash registers. Uncle Joe, cleaning up's all the modernizing we're gonna do. Well, it wouldn't hurt to install the latest supermarket methods of displaying merchandise as practiced by O'Donnell. What's that? Putting stuff where you can't find it. Well, that doesn't make sense. Uh, where's the coffee? Coffee? Oh, right here. Exactly. You ever buy coffee at O'Donnell's? No. Well, it ain't out in the open killing business like that. Where is it? It's in the back of the store. Well, then how do you find it? Well, it's easy once O'Donnell gives you the directions. You go down aisle B, past the canned fruit salad, succotash, and dog food. Then you turn right at the hot water bottles. Turn left at the movie magazines. And you'll find the coffee at the end of the aisle on the bottom shelf. <laughs> no wonder you came home with all that stuff. I was just testing out his merchandising methods to see if they'd work on me. Wouldn't be a bad idea to put this store in some kind of order. It'd sure help out Mr. Drucker. Why don't we pull everything down and put it back up with some kind of a, a system? Okay, let's go. Uh, Mom, where should I put these? I'll take them, dear. Did we put everything back? Everything except the confusion. <laughs> Boy, look at all the room there is. Yeah. Put these yeah. up there, will you, dear? We're gonna need a couple of cases of stuff to fill in the spaces. Hey, our first customer. I need a customer's Newt Kylie. Welcome. Hi, Newt. Where, where's the coffee? Right down the aisle there, past the button hooks, past Renway's raccoon coat renewer. You turn right at the horse collar, and you'll find it at the end of the aisle on the bottom shelf. Thanks. Billy Joe, you better get a big box for his order. Okay. Bobby Joe, you better get a big box. Kate, will you put this coffee on my bill? Wait a minute. Is that all you're going to buy? It's all I'll come in for. Yeah, I know, but on the way you were supposed to pick up a couple of button hooks, a bottle of Renway's raccoon coat renewer, and a horse collar. What for? I, I don't have a horse. Look, Newt, if you don't want to abide by our modern methods of merchandising, we don't want your business. Joe, sure. I'll put the coffee on your account, Newt. Oh, thanks, Kate. See, you're hardy to get along with than Sam. <laughs> Uncle Joe, why don't you put the coffee back where you can find it? Kate, I'm just trying to help Sam. You really trying to help Sam? Sure. Then why don't you go up to O'Donnell's and short circuit his electric eyeballs? <laughs> yesterday and got a lot of bites, mostly mosquitoes. Ha uh ha. -huh. <laughs> Doggone that sound sure makes up a lot of funny ones. Uh, I've been sleeping 10 hours a night and I'm not nervous no more. I only heard the phone not ringing twice yesterday. <laughs> I want to thank you for taking care of things so that I could go away on this vacation. I'm not worried at all. I know the store's in good hands. Oh, wholesale groceries, huh? Mr. Drucker's been dealing with our firm for many years. Oh, I'm managing the store while he's away. Your shelves are kind of bare. You should have seen how crowded they was a couple of days ago before I installed my modern methods of merchandising. I've been thinking about filling in the stock to take care of the large volume of sales I'm anticipating. Well, I'll be glad to take your order. Well, let's see. Uh, we'll start with A. Uh, applesauce. I only got two cans left. Uh, better have some of them. Well, uh, we've got a real good deal on Krellman's applesauce. Two forty a case. How many in a case? 24. 
Gee, that's 10 cents a can. I'll take three. <laughs> and uh, what else? Uh, beans. Uh, give me six of them. Sure. <laughs> Boy. Well, we need a hand unloading Sam's grocery order. Well, Sam didn't tell me he ordered any groceries. Oh, I reckon he just forgot. He was getting away in such a hurry. Well, Kate, we'll unload it ourselves. Thanks. I guess we'd better get the stuff off the roof first. <laughs> roof? Yeah, there wasn't no more room on the coach. <laughs> Are those all groceries? The locomotive cows plumb full of cream corn. <laughs> oh, poor Sam. He was in worse shape than I realized. He didn't know what he was doing. Hey, Joe, look at all the stuff Sam bought. <laughs> well, I, I just remembered I got to get a haircut. Wait a second. <laughs> didn't you just get a haircut? Yeah, yeah, but it's grown since then. <laughs> Uncle Joe, what do you know about all that? All of what? All those groceries. Is that what they are? The day I left you alone in the store, did any salesmen come in? Yeah, two. What were they selling? One of them was selling thimbles, Kate. The junkiest thimbles you ever saw. You wouldn't think of putting one and on your finger. And what was the other fella selling? Kate, they was the tinniest. Over what there. was the other fella selling? I don't know. Could it have been groceries? Yeah, yeah, it could have been groceries. Uncle Joe! <laughs> I can explain. And explain from in front of me. I don't want to get hurt. Good Joe, how could you do a thing like that? Kate, it was all a mistake. It certainly was. I should never have left you alone in the store. But you see, I thought that... I'm not interested. Just take all that stuff back. We can't. Why not? Because the grocery company won't accept it back. What? Kate, you just don't understand modern methods of merchandising. Uncle Joe! Ooh. Hey, hey! Women, least little thing upsets them. I thought you was gonna stay another week, Mr. Drucker. Oh, there's no need to. I feel better than I've felt in years. Well, I hope you'll come back real soon. Well, I plan to, now that I got somebody reliable to look after my store. Uh, bye. Bye. Keep the fish biting. <laughs> Hi, Kate. <laughs> Kate! Uh, how are you, uh, uh, uh... Sam. <laughs> Sam, what are you doing here? What am I doing here? Kate, what's wrong? Nothing. Nothing. You're going to sell all that stuff. What stuff? Answer the phone. <laughs> Kate, is something wrong with the store? What makes you think something's wrong with the store? Uh, 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 Sam. <laughs> Kate, what's wrong? Nothing's wrong. With modern merchandise and methods, you'll be able to sell those 2,000 cases of groceries in no time. What 2,000 cases? The ones Uncle Joe bought. Joe? Yeah. <laughs> Answer the phone. Only ran twice. Three times. Twice. There it goes again. Uh, uh... Kate. Oh, yes, you came in for a small can of peas. Yeah, and a bottle of Renway's Raccoon Coke Renewer and two button hooks. <laughs> if you're not going to answer that phone, I am. <laughs> This has been a Filmways presentation.